Do you often find yourself stuck in a loop of repetitive thoughts? If so, you're certainly not alone. Today we're diving into the world of overthinking, a mental trap that many of us fall into, often without even realising it. We're taking a look at the enlightening book, How to Stop Overthinking by Liam Anderson, a guide filled with practical techniques to transform your thoughts and free yourself from the chains of negative thinking cycles. This book offers 10 key insights that we'll explore, ranging from the role of our emotional brain in overthinking to how childhood experiences shape our reactions and even the benefits of consistent small steps in breaking free from overthinking. Yes, there's a lot to cover, but the good news is these insights offer a holistic perspective to tackle overthinking at its roots. Are you ready to break free from your mental loops? Let's dive into the first insight. Our brains are intricate machines with different parts handling various tasks. Just like a well-oiled engine, each part of our brain has a specific role to play. There's the emotional part, the instinctual part, and the part responsible for higher reasoning. These parts work together, creating the symphony that is our daily existence. But what happens when one part starts to play louder than the rest? Overthinking, that's what. It's when the emotional brain takes centre stage, drowning out the sound of reason and instinct. You may be thinking, wait a minute, shouldn't our emotions be a part of our decision-making process? Absolutely, they should. But when our emotional brain becomes the conductor of our thought orchestra, reason and instinct are left playing second fiddle. This emotional takeover can lead to a cycle of negative thinking, a whirlpool that's hard to escape from. When overthinking takes over, it's often the emotional brain at the helm. Did you know your past could be dictating your present? An intriguing idea, isn't it? Let's delve into this concept further. According to Liam Anderson in his insightful book, How to Stop Overthinking, our childhood experiences are stored in our minds as emotional memories. These emotional memories many times operate in the background of our subconscious minds, influencing our behaviours and reactions in ways we might not fully understand. Imagine a puppet master pulling the strings, except in this case, the puppet master is our past and the puppet represents our present behaviour. It's as if we're on autopilot, reacting based on past feelings rather than responding to the present moment. This subconscious control can lead us into a cycle of overthinking, where we're not just reliving the past, but also letting it dictate our present. Our past experiences might be subconsciously controlling our reactions. But don't worry, understanding this is the first step towards breaking free. Are you guilty of emotional time travel? It's a common practice, but it keeps us tethered to the past, preventing us from truly experiencing the present. This concept is explored in Liam Anderson's book, How to Stop Overthinking. When we react based on past feelings, we're not living in the present moment. We're simply reliving old emotions. This emotional time travel is a fuel for overthinking. We replay past scenarios, dissecting what we could have done differently, or we project ourselves into the future, imagining all the things that could go wrong. But here's the catch. The past is unchangeable and the future is unpredictable. The importance of present moment living cannot be overstated. It's about acknowledging and accepting our feelings as they are right now without judgment or comparison to past experiences. It's about appreciating the here and now, not being held hostage by our own minds. It's time to step out of the past and into the present. Why do we overthink? The answer might lie in our childhood. As we journey through Liam Anderson's insights, we come upon a pivotal idea, understanding the root causes of overthinking. It's not enough to simply know that we overthink. We need to understand why. Our brains are complex machines and our childhood experiences can imprint emotional memories that influence our behaviours and reactions in adult life. These memories can sometimes subconsciously control us, triggering overthinking patterns. Imagine your mind as a tangled web of thoughts and emotions, each strand connected to a past experience or emotion. When one strand is tugged, the entire web vibrates, setting off a chain reaction. That's overthinking a chain reaction of thoughts propelled by our past. So, when we address overthinking, we're not just dealing with the symptoms, we're diving deep into our past, into the very fabric of our minds. Addressing overthinking requires a deeper understanding of our past and our brains. Can we change our automatic emotional responses? The answer is a resounding yes. According to Liam Anderson's book, How to Stop Overthinking, 
One of the most transformative tools we have at our disposal is the power to form new neural pathways. Imagine your brain as an intricate network of trails. Some of these trails are well-trodden, representing our habitual thoughts and reactions. These might not always lead us to the healthiest emotional states. However, we can forge new trails, new ways of thinking and responding through repetition of positive thoughts and actions. This is not a one-time endeavor. Rewiring our emotional responses requires persistence like a hiker breaking new ground. Over time, these new pathways become our default routes, leading us towards healthier emotional responses. So next time you catch yourself slipping into an old pattern, remember you have the power to choose a different trail. With repetition and positive action, we can rewire our emotional responses. What if I told you that your perception shapes your reality? This is the sixth insight from Liam Anderson's book, How to Stop Overthinking. It's a powerful notion, isn't it? The way we perceive the world around us significantly impacts our body, our health and our overall well-being. Each one of us has a unique lens through which we interpret the world, and this lens is often coloured by our past experiences, beliefs and assumptions. But what if we could take control of this lens? What if we could consciously adjust our perceptions to promote healthier thoughts and behaviours? Imagine the possibilities. We could transform our world from a place of anxiety and overthinking to one of serenity and clarity. We could shift our focus from dwelling on past mistakes to embracing the present moment and looking forward to the future with optimism. Remember, our perceptions are not fixed. They are malleable and we have the power to reshape them. We have the power to change our world by changing our perceptions. Ever heard of the saying, Rome wasn't built in a day? It's a timeless reminder that great things aren't achieved overnight, but through consistent small steps. In the journey to stop overthinking, this principle holds true. Liam Anderson, in his book How to Stop Overthinking, emphasizes that upgrading our habits gradually leads to transformation better than expecting overnight change. It's about setting small achievable goals and consistently working towards them. It could be as simple as dedicating five minutes a day to mindfulness or consciously letting go of one negative thought each day. Every step, no matter how small, is a step away from the cycle of overthinking. It's these small steps that over time rewire our brains, change our emotional responses and ultimately transform our lives. Remember, every journey begins with a single step. So, don't underestimate the power of small, consistent steps. Small, consistent steps can lead to big transformations. Let's talk about the power of influence. Every day, we're surrounded by a torrent of information, images and messages from the media and our environment. These forces are not neutral. Over time, they shape our beliefs, perceptions and even our reactions. It's like water eroding a rock, slowly but surely changing its shape. If we're constantly exposed to negative or stressful content, it can feed our overthinking habits. But here's the good news. We're not helpless in the face of these influences. We have the power to make conscious choices about what we expose ourselves to. We can choose to engage with uplifting content, positive environments and supportive communities. We can decide to limit our exposure to distressing news or toxic social media. By making these conscious choices, we take control of the influences shaping our thoughts and beliefs. We're not just passive receivers of information, we're active curators of our mental environment. So remember, we must make conscious choices to protect our minds. Restlessness and worry are often signs of an overactive mind. An overactive mind is like a hamster on a wheel, constantly spinning but getting nowhere. It's a breeding ground for anxiety, stress and overthinking. But there's good news. According to Liam Anderson's book, How to Stop Overthinking, we can address this restlessness and worry and calm our overactive minds. The way we respond to stress and worry is often a result of past trauma or deeply ingrained habits. This can lead to a cycle of overthinking that fuels our restlessness and worry. But we have the power to break this cycle. By recognizing and addressing our worries and trauma responses, we can start to calm our minds. This doesn't mean that we will never worry or feel restless again, Instead, it means that we are better equipped to handle these feelings when they arise. We can acknowledge them, address them, and then let them go, rather than allowing them to spiral into overthinking. By addressing our worries, we can calm our minds. What if you could train your brain like a muscle? Imagine being able to flex your mental strength, 
to have the power to direct your thoughts rather than letting them control you. This isn't a far-off fantasy, but a practical reality explored in Liam Anderson's How to Stop Overthinking. The tenth insight from this enlightening book emphasises the power of dedication in brain training. Just like how a consistent workout regimen can sculpt your body, a steadfast commitment to moulding your mind can yield significant results. It's about forming new neural pathways through repetition of positive thoughts and actions, thereby rewiring emotional responses over time. This is no quick fix, but a journey of transformation. It's about shifting perceptions, upgrading habits and making conscious choices. It's about addressing restlessness, worry and trauma responses to calm and overactive mind. And above all, it's about dedication, persistence and patience. With dedication, anyone can train their brain for better focus and peace of mind. So what's the takeaway from all these insights? Let's summarize. The book How to Stop Overthinking by Liam Anderson teaches us that our brain's emotional takeovers can often lead to overthinking, and these are largely influenced by our childhood experiences. It encourages us to break free from the chains of the past and live in the present. Understanding the root causes of our overthinking is crucial, and this understanding can help us rewire our emotional responses over time. We learned that controlling our perceptions and taking small, consistent steps to upgrade our habits can make a significant difference. Our environment and the media we consume also shape our beliefs and contribute to overthinking. Addressing restlessness, worry and trauma responses can help calm our minds. And remember, anyone can train their brain with dedication. In conclusion, the insights from this book provide a comprehensive guide to tackle overthinking at its roots. Remember, the power to stop overthinking lies within you.